Well, there's a lot of people who talk about such a thing as group ride etiquette. Now, what is group ride etiquette? And let's just have a look at what it is some of the people consider group ride etiquette. And is it really a thing in a group ride or is it just a belief of a few that should be applied to the many? Well, let's roll that intro and let's have a bit of a discussion about what is group ride etiquette and really is it something that can be applied in a situation where you have a group ride? Well, group ride etiquette is a kind of unwritten rule that some people believe that you need to follow. Now, we all, obviously with a group ride, especially if it's organized by a shop or some kind of body, generally has very specific rules. Like they might say that this is a 25 kilometer hour ride or it's a 30 kilometer hour ride or it's a 20 kilometer hour ride. And obviously the pace is, is set by the people who are managing that group. They're usually, I don't know what you call them, but they're kind of the people that ride along with a group and they manage things and they, they kind of give instructions of how people should really ride their bike and act when someone gets a flat or where people are getting too far out in front or whatever. They, they tend to act as the policeman to keep the group in a kind of situation where it's still staying within the parameters of what people expected when they joined for that group ride. But group ride etiquette is something else. This is something that is like an unwritten rule where people believe that, that the people in the group should do things that are beneficial to all of the group, but, the, but it isn't a rule. So what could group ride etiquette encompass? And what that could be, it could be like people leaning on their handlebars with their forearms, this part here. It could be no half wheeling. It could be things like not chatting. It could be things like you don't ride with no hands on the handlebars. Or it could be even not putting your hands in the drops, which happened to me once. So these are ideas that people have and probably the way they ride, but they want to impress them on other people or say that they should do them because they think that they're a good idea. Now the whole problem with group ride etiquette is that every individual in that ride may have a different idea of what they think is reasonable to ride in that group or not reasonable to ride the group. And it's not being policed by the person who you might call as the mascot or the policeman that has been assigned by the, the higher body, which is the shop or the committee that runs those groups. So it's outside of the rules, but people believe that they are rules that you need to comply to. Etiquette rules apply. Order, order. Now this is where the whole thing of group right etiquette sort of falls a little bit apart because if you probably asked everyone in the group, they would have probably a different idea of what group right etiquette is. And I've even heard people even as far arguing that rim brakes shouldn't be involved in group rides because they can't stop as quick as disc brakes. But they don't put any science forward to support that. It's just an idea that they have and they believe disc brakes are, are superior to rim brakes. So we don't want rim brakes riding in our group. Now if that's set by the committee or the the shop body and you know people have agreed to that and that was part of the conditions of joining the group, that's fair enough. But if someone in the group just starts complaining, go, hey mate, you can't bring your rim bike along because um, we don't want rim brakes in our group. And that's just something that they've discussed with a few people over coffee in the group after a group ride. That's meaningless and you can't impose that on others if it's not an official rule. It's just an idea. And this is where it can start to cause conflict in the group and people go, hang on a sec, that's not a rule. They go, oh yeah, yeah, but everyone knows that disc brakes stop quicker than rim brakes and we could have an accident that could be caused because of that. And this is where they put their argument. It's, it's more about their feelings and not so much about the facts or proof of if that will actually really cause an accident. So in conclusion, my take on group ride etiquette, and I've been a person that's been subject to an individual's idea who kind of 
felt that they were running the group because it was a small group and we were just kind of friends riding. And they took it on themselves to really feel that they should tell others how they should ride in this group when it had not been agreed on or anything. And that one was, you can't ride in the drops. Now, I've never heard something so crazy before in my life. And the person that was doing this actually had aero bars on the bike and actually almost did cause an accident because she couldn't get to the brakes quick enough. And she basically diverted around another rider when those riders come the other way. And one of the guys further back in the group ended up going across the bicycle path and over the fence. And, and it was just minor injuries, but it did cause an incident. And I think people should be very, very careful of being critical of others and saying that, hey, look, I don't like what you're doing because it's unsafe. Now, I've worked in safety before and I've been involved in a lot of safety promotions. I've given presentations on safety and safety is not a feeling. Safety is a analysis and that's set down in a lot of standards and it comes down to a likelihood and a consequent matrix. And there's even standards that say, hey, look, if it's less than one in a million, you don't even have to mitigate it as a business. So there's criteria, guidelines that set safety. But unfortunately, people have this personal perception of what safety is. I feel that that's dangerous or I feel that's not dangerous. Some people are a bit more risk averse than others and that comes from how they feel. So really, I have to really say that group ride etiquette is not a thing and people should not be imposing on others. If they want to raise a new rule within the group, they need to discuss it with the group, it needs to be voted on and passed and then it becomes a rule. There's not, there's not like what you should do, there is what you have to do and what you not have to do. And those things should be clear to all the people in the group. Now, if it's a small group, then you would manage that obviously internally. When you have a coffee, you would say, hey guys, look, I think that we should be doing this because it's, I believe that's unsafe and maybe we should only ride in single file, we're on single lane roads and we'll, we'll ride two people on a two lane road, which is actually the law here in West Australia, but it may not be the law everywhere, but you want to, might want to make that rule to safeguard the riders when they're riding along on different road conditions. Or you might say, hey, look, no forearms on the handlebars because you haven't got full control of the bicycle. Can we at least have our hands on the tops or on the top bar? or we have them on the drops. So you're in full contact with the, the bicycle control at any time. You can't just ride along, you know, sitting up with your hands in the air, putting jackets on, eating bars and all that sort of stuff. So those would need to be agreed to all of them. And if, if some of the people go, no, no way, I want to be able to put my jacket on. Well then, if the majority want that, you have to agree to it. You can't impose something because you think it's good group ride etiquette onto the others. Well, anyway, guys, this can be a really controversial topic. So leave your comments down below. And guys, remember to like and comment on the video because the, the YouTube algorithm, it, it, that's how it works. You know, the more people that comment, the more people like, it pushes the, the videos out into the community. And we wanna get more, more cyclists out there in contact with what's appropriate when you're cycling. And I hope that I'm bringing that to cycling and that's where I'm going to leave it. So guys, bicycle etiquette, what's your take on it? Cheers.